This is Lara Croft's Underwater Adventure. I love Tomb Raider and last time she was in a tomb of glowing lava. This time I wanted to try an underwater scene. She may only be a couple of centimetres tall in this but she's distinctive. It's Lara Croft underwater and I couldn't find an STL of her diving. So what I had to do was create my own. I merged a game asset of Lara, which I got online, and a sort of another game asset of a diver, and then merged them all, made them watertight so I could 3D print them and created an STL. Then I rigged and posed it so I could put it into a diving position. That was new to me and took quite a long time. After all that effort, I bought the rest of the figures. It was much easier. So bad guys from CG Trader, a rib from Thingiverse, and an Egyptian statue from my mini factory. I cut the bottom off that in Blender to make it fit. I had the cylinder to put them all in. I know it's not gonna leak then. And then all I had to do was print everything. It still amazes me. I get a file off the internet and perfectly reproduce an ancient Egyptian statue or whatever but they still need a bit of work. They don't come off perfect. You have to support them or they fall over while printing, especially these resin ones. So I need just to snip off all my supports and clean everything up. I used Tamiya Fine Grey Primer to get them all started on the paint process. I want everybody to know the three men shooting are bad guys. So I'm painting them in dark colors. I got out the box art to check what color Lara's gonna be and started painting. Yeah, it, it does look like a big brush, doesn't it? It's got quite a fine point though, and I did use it for everything. I made a mistake starting in black. It doesn't give you anywhere to go with the shadows, so I had to go over it with a darker gray in a bit. Sadly, my age is starting to show, and I now need a magnifying lamp to really be able to see something this small. If it hasn't happened to you yet, don't worry, it probably will one day if you carry on painting miniatures. I paint most figures regardless of size the same way. I paint the base colours. I put on some washes. These are actually army painter washes. They're a little bit thicker, so they stay on the flatter surfaces better. And then if necessary, I paint out any highlights or bits that have got a bit muddy. I wanted a splash of colour, so I painted the rib bright red. It needed two coats, some sections picking out in black, a quick spray of satin varnish for some gloss, and a stripe masked, then painted down the side to finish it. Then it was time for Ramesses to get a couple of coats of a sand coloured acrylic, a dry brush with a much lighter colour to bring out all the details, and then a sludgy brown enamel wash to settle into all the crevices. And after using all these colours of paint, I was finally done. Now I've got all the pieces, I just added some sand to the bottom of the cylinder and planted my statue. Now, if I was doing this again, I would hot glue it to the base because it came up later. But for now, I thought, oh, I'll put the sand in, then I'll put the glue on and then the sand will nicely hold it all down. So I piled it around the bottom of the statue and made sure there was none on top. To glue it down, I used my normal scenery glues. So I started with isopropyl alcohol and water, about a third isopropyl alcohol, the rest water, and I dripped it over the statue so I wouldn't disturb the sort of sand beneath. I probably didn't need quite as much as I put in. I followed up with a very dilute mix of matte Mod Podge. It's about a sixth matte Mod Podge, and that goes through my spray bottles. Um, it's probably a little bit too thin for this, and I could have done with a bit more strength. When it was dry, I added some tile grout. The sand is a little out of scale, to be honest. Um, sand generally is when you use it in a model, but tile grout's about the right scale. So it's nice and solid, so I just put the tile grout on there and brushed it round, made sure there was none left on his face. But actually, it wasn't that solid. And my statue came up. Hmm. Yeah. Not a great moment. Still very easily fixed with more sand and more tar grout. All this has really done is left a layer 
around the side that looks quite odd. So it's quite neat looking at the star. And by the end, you've got a layer of tar grout, then a layer of sand, then another layer of tar grout instead of just a nice topping. But if that's the worst that goes wrong on this project, I'll be pleased. I've got to be honest, this next stage, putting a sealant of matte Mod Podge over the base so that the rubber wouldn't seep into it and it wouldn't react with it. You know, it's got cement in it. My last rubber water that I did reacted with the solvents quite badly. Yeah, it worked and it didn't work. It, it also <laughs> took so long to dry because I put so much on trying to get around the back of that overhang and I didn't succeed, but it took so long. It actually took a week for it to go dry and clear in one or two patches. So this actually had two weeks of drying because I then went on holiday for a week, not having finished the video. When it was dry, but not clear, I went around the tide mark from the, all the gluing and just got rid of it with a cotton bud and some water. I did a little bit of a test with the rubber water. I want bullet trails. And for that, I can either push in a wire afterwards or pull one out that's been in there while it's set. I decided the second gave a better result. The thick wire was a bit too thick and if you don't have the angles right, when you try and pull the wire out, it will just destroy the surface and flake it in this really bad way. And I couldn't work out how to do the two layers. I was worried about them delaminating, which is an issue if you leave it too long. And so the Master Chief fell to the bottom because I didn't leave it long enough. I decided to put Lara on a piece of acetate. So first up, I tested where I needed the bullet trails to come from. So I've got two men who are gonna be shooting down from the boat. I decided the third angle was just a bit naff and he's only got a little pistol anyway. So to suspend Lara, I used this. It's from a knitting needle packet that my mum had. A little spot of super glue, put her foot in place and just glued her onto it. With all the bullet trails, I hoped it wouldn't show. I test put her in place with a bit of masking tape holding her. I came back later and added hot glue to make sure she was really firm. I used 28 weight florist wire as the bullet trail. It's just the guide for them. When I pull them out, it will leave a beautiful silver streak, hopefully, and made them into little um, sort of cones coming out from a central point, which is where the man's gun's gonna be. I couldn't really get Lara to do anything but a vertical angle. She's just too heavy for the acetate that I have. And I couldn't find any one millimeter small acrylic rods that would deliver in time. So I tested everything and then just hot glued finally. It then occurred to me it was all a little close to the water surface. So I added just some sticks to hold it up um, and made sure the masking tape held everything down firm. It didn't move, surprisingly. Now the fun bit, rubber water. So why not epoxy resin? Well, this doesn't heat up. You can do the whole pour in one go and it's really simple to use. I did just over two liters, hence the massive buckets and measured it out. It's equal parts A and B with a little bit of blue tint. You put this in one half, so it needs to be twice the strength that you want. I only want a gentle tint. You saw my test piece. And then you just fill it up. The bubbles magically go. It's not like resin, there's no trap bubbles. You don't need to blow anything. They go within a couple of minutes. But I had a problem. I had bubbles. Bubbles constantly coming up from the base. And you can see that the left-hand side of the base looks a lot darker than the right-hand side. And that's because the sealing that I did, that layer of Mod Podge didn't totally seal around the back under the statue. And so the rubber water started to go into that base. And as it went in, it pushed out air. And as the rubber thickens, it catches air. Hmm. And so I was left with this massive bubble. Now this probably wouldn't have been too bad. It's around the back of the statue, but of course, I had to go and try and prod it to release it. It's very gel-like. This is two hours after I mixed it. And oh, actually what all I did was I made the top of the bubble a weird shape and I put all these streams of bubbles in that I didn't see at the time I was doing it or I'd have stopped. And these streams of bubbles, yeah, can't do much about them. They're just there. They're a feature now. So I snipped the top of Lara's acetate off, first of all, so I didn't jerk her in any way. 
and I cut the wires from their hot glue. I need to leave enough so I can pull them out with a pair of tweezers. The bubble actually, one of them you can see here is stuck on the surface um, and it, where I put the wire in I left quite a divot. But thankfully the wires came out really easily. The rubber just doesn't stick to things and you could easily free the whole lot from rubber if you wanted. It's just a case of putting the tweezer in and pulling. And there we are, a new bullet trail. Despite the bubble, big learning point about what you put at the bottom there, I really like the way the bullet trails work in this rubber. I'm not sure you could do it in resin as easily, but they look frothy at the top, don't they? So a quick hoover and it's time to put some waves on. It'll cover my problems on the surface. Clearfix is a hybrid polymer, which means you use white spirit to thin it. And it does dry a little bit dull, but it's a beautiful way of working on something like silicon rubber that is repellent to water-based products. I was a little over exuberant in my mixing though. And you can see bubbles when I put this on. Thankfully, when you spread it thinly, they tend to disappear, though you can see a couple at the final result. And then I just had to put the boat in place. And this is actually a glue, so it will happily glue that boat where it should be. So no problem. I left the people for now. I didn't want to put too much in and I just made ripples. Then all I needed to do was tease some up for where the bullets were entering the water. I let it dry overnight. It's gone dull as you can see. And then I use super glue to add in my three men. I put a little bit of white paint where the bullets were entering the water and round the wake from the motor. Very little though. To add the gloss, I needed a paint that will go over this, which is basically not water-based. To me, a clear, although it says it's an acrylic, it works very well over something like this. So I just used to me a clear to add that final gloss touch and I was done. So that's it for this adventure. If you have something you'd like to see Lara doing, then do let me know in the comments below. I'm always looking for another Lara Croft adventure. Otherwise, subscribe, hit the bell button so you know when I'm doing a new video. And thank you for watching. And thank you to my patrons and YouTube channel members who support me doing this. You're awesome. See you next time.